Press play. No, it's already good. It's recording. So, yeah. Well, I can edit it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. To back right. on everything. <laughs> What's up? So, gonna do a Q&A. Hasey here from Iceland. Viking, all around awesome guy. Highland gamer. And uh, Mr. Mr. Personality here, Scott Ryder. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's quite handsome. So, got a Q&A on Instagram yesterday. Thank you guys. And uh, let's fire away at what we got. Haven't even looked at these yet. All right. How do these non-mainstream athletes find their training and lifestyle, your, yourself included, uh, Matt? Uh, um, fund, oh, I'll say. How do I fund my training and lifestyle? Uh, I have a job. I uh, have a real job that I work that, that pays well, and I use that money to enjoy some hobbies. Like throwing, uh, Highland Games is a little different than a lot of the other pro, you know, hobbies per se. Is you know we're very lucky. We get paid. We get to travel. Um, there's prize money every weekend. They usually you know help us out with travel money. Scotland's a little bit different. Um, how, what would you say? I um I take the literary works of other people, <laughs> sell them, <laughs> keep the money. It's a smart move. Plagiarism and pirating <laughs> is. That's one way you can go about it. Uh, Hasty? Like how do I... Yeah, how do you afford to, to train and throw? I got a good wife. She's got a job. And uh, that's what you need. Just get a good wife. Yeah, good wife. Go with yeah. that. Two. Mm. <laughs> I don't take any money. Alright. Um, but that's it. I've got some other stuff, you know, between sponsors and stuff that help out. But the Highland game affords itself. Absolutely, and so I train in my spare time away from work. Um, so Dan Simmeral, Simmeral, 725. Oh, this is for me. This is fucking brilliant. You can answer the same way. Do you think you'd be stronger and more explosive with a beard? Oh, I, yeah. I do believe that, except for I don't genetically grow, have the ability to grow one. What you're looking at right now is a solid week. This is an empty fucking week of beard. Really? Yeah, this is really sad. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting made fun of by <laughs> yeah. Hey, see, and you've been growing this for almost a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's five days. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Why, why don't you I'm, think of maybe well, a beard? I've grown a beard, but I've got a sort of blonde moustache. Oh, yeah. And a blonde bit under my chin. And then the rest is really dark. Do you feel about maybe just grow it out? I don't, I don't want. I don't know the way. Just grow the blonde moustache. Just grow a massive moustache. Oh, it fucking be that would be awesome. No, because my, like my, my moustache, my moustache is blonde. I'd it's, like to sponsor your moustache. Yeah. yeah How much right. a month can I pay you to grow a moustache? Well, what are you prepared to pay? <laughs> <laughs> so for you to, I mean, you can't trim it. Nothing. You have to just fucking let it live. What you mean? I will let it hang over. No, you can you can trim it a little bit, but it, no no higher than the bottom lip. What would that, you have to pay me a month? Yeah. I mean, a month. Just a month. Just, just a month would be tough. Um, no, this is a stupid question. I mean, it's not a stupid well, question. I, I've got money, and you grow facial hair. Uh, to make an exchange. A thousand dollars a month. A thousand dollars a month. That's what it would work. Oh, fuck it. Come on. Well, there you go. I'll give you fifty bucks a month. No. A hundred bucks a month. No. I would no. shave for a hundred. No, I'm joking. I would. <laughs> All right. A hundred bucks a month. Twelve hundred dollars a year. But you can't fucking shave it. No, no, I've, 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 no I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do it. All right. Uh, life at the winery. All right. Favorite superheroes. I've always liked Punisher. I like. Um, I like those type of characters, your anti-heroes. Um, I was an X-Men fan, I always liked Wolverine. So Punisher and Wolverine were my favorites. I'd go Thor. 
Nobody can take Thor. That makes sense. He's a god. The Hulk. Okay. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I mean, look, if we're going to decide who could win and who couldn't win, Superman's basically fucking indestructible. I mean, this whole Batman versus Superman thing, it could just, a phone could ring at fucking Batman's house. And when he answers it, hey, by the way, it's Superman, and then he fucking just flies through him at a million yeah. miles an hour Thor and explodes him, and that would be the end of it. Thor could just get some kryptonite, rub it on his hammer, and just throw it he at him. He wouldn't even know Superman's coming. Superman could literally fly back in time and then run right through him at a trillion miles an hour. Yeah, but he couldn't do that to the Hulk. Why couldn't he? He would do it to Bruce Banner. He would, Bruce Banner wouldn't even know what's happening. He would just, He'd just be walking tear down him the street and be He's a fucking Hulk. He's Superman. No, I wouldn't want. Oh, you're right. I, I, I forgot about that part of the <laughs> argument. <laughs> really fucking dialed that one in. Uh, AJ Belch. Nice. Uh, what's everyone's favorite bourbon and beer? Mine would be bourbon, would be Blanton's. Beer changes depending on the season. Uh, this one's good. Uh, the Punk IPA from Underdog in Scotland. It's pretty solid. I'd go beer Duvel. Mm. Or Icelandic Viking Strong. That's pretty good. See, I like Icelandic. I like, uh, yeah. I like Einstock. You guys, mm. Christmas beer is really good. Yeah, but also the Danish beer. You know, two board. Yeah, two board. Yeah. yeah, but I'd go. Yeah, Icelandic beer. I'd go Viking strong, or Duvel. Don't drink a lot of bourbon, but whiskey. Like whiskey. Yeah, I. I don't think we. No. No. I like Glenmorangie. Yeah. The good stuff. Mm. Not yeah, the cheap Glenmorangie. Glenmorangie is good for. Boy, it depends how old it is. I mean, uh, well, it can't age at your house or anything. I like hard It Doesn't age in the bottle. You're a bottle. Ardbeck. Oh, it's an Ardbeck. It's quite far like Yeah, there. I like the with Peaty. Peaty? Mm, the West it's like the West Coast, isn't it? Yeah, for the East Coast whiskey. Yeah, big man. Yeah, it's an island whiskey. Yeah, big man. What uh what about beer, Scotty? Um I like this, Cronenberg. I like Duval as well. Yeah. I've only I haven't drunk a lot of bourbon. Bullet. Drunk bullet, nice. you bought me some bullet. I like that bullet was nice. Alright. Um Oh, Noah Strength. What's up, Noah? How are you, man? Uh, who wins a no-holds-barred cage match between Prince Charles and Joe Biden? Who's Joe Biden? Yeah. Oh, he's one of our... He's our vice president. Well, Prince Charles. Prince Charles is fucking old. Joe Biden will fucking bite his ears off. Oh, I, I don't know Joe Biden is. I can ask. Is he kind of old white guy? Charles is quite big. You think? I've met Prince Charles. Come on. He's a, I would say he's six. At dinner at his house, yeah? I would say he's six, four, six, five. Come nine, on. Nine, <laughs> two, six, two. <laughs> yeah, all in the ears. I'm telling you. No, he's no fucking way that guy's that big. He's a bigger guy than you think. Come on. Big hands. Is this something you guys put on? Up. No, he's Pretty he's, Charles. William, how big do you think William is? William's about six, seven. No, my God. <laughs> Seriously, that's why the Queen Mother was Oh so no, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Charlie, she looks old because she's 300 years old. Charlie boy, take all comments, no problem. <laughs> no problem. I'm gonna say Joe Biden. Joe Biden's a younger man. He's fiery. He says fuck on camera occasionally. <laughs> Makes mistakes. And Charles has been in the army as well. Well, so what? He's probably a fancy boy in the army. Oh, he must have had some sort of training in yeah, combat, you know? Whatever. All right. Kurt Schiller, how is the nightlife in Iceland? It's fun. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's um, wild. I always remember the first time I got there and just seemed to be Polish people in the street who seemed to be enjoying a lot of cocaine. That's what I remember. Except they're, they probably weren't Polish and were just... Ah, oh, you can pick out the Polish guys there. Yeah? Yeah, they're dead behind the eyes. I mean, it goes on forever. I mean, we got, <laughs> it's good fun. If you ever go to Iceland, you know. What should you not do in a bar in Iceland? I know that if you tip, you can get your drinks fucking super fast because nobody tips over there. I gave a bartender a thousand krona what for tipping me, and she basically we had a personal bartender and waitress the rest of the night. I just it's like ten dollars. Just be polite. Don't be a dick, and you're good. There you go. I haven't done a lot of nightclubs in Iceland. I don't really go out and dance, and they're really fucking loud, and they're really expensive. Yeah. I like I like bars. I like to go to a bar, maybe throw some darts, enjoy myself. Yeah. Yeah. We usually just 
When you guys came over, you just usually how much stay is at a, somebody's house. How much is like a pint of beer? Pint of beer. Fucking ten bucks. Yeah. Right. right. It's expensive, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I've been to Norway and the drinks were unbelievably expensive. Yeah. All right. Solaris. Okay, so I have to cut weight for U.S. Air Force uh, uh, PT standards, physical training th standards. He's dropped 10 pounds over the last month or so, but his lifts are dropping. Should I accept being weaker for uh, a sub 38 inch waist? I mean, yeah, yeah, man. If, you're, if your goals are going to be the U.S. Air Force standards, make that your goals and be the best at that you can. Who gives a shit about your lifts right now if that's going to be your goals? Check out a friend of mine, uh, Max Pippa. He uh, should be on Instagram. He's an Army Ranger. He's a really strong power lifter. was a pro strong man. And I lost a lot of weight. And PT standards went up a ton. And um, you know, great guy. And uh, really still stayed strong. But it's going to take some time to rebuild your strength back afterwards. But if your goal is going to be the, the PT stuff for the art, you know, for military, do that and be serious about that. Lose the weight. Be smart. I mean, who fucking gives a shit about your squat? Be good at the military stuff. I got no tips on losing weight. Yeah, it's not my thing either. Yeah. I'm just telling you. If... So that's what you should do. Do that. Be good at the thing that you're currently trying to do. Don't try to serve two masters. Uh, Jacob Aaron Wilson. Oh, tips for building a stronger posterior chain and upper back. Deadlift. That's it. That would be the number one. Are you deadlifting? The answer should be yes. Do it. Once a week, moderately heavy for the next 10 years. It'll take care of it. Yeah. Um, I like squats, though. Well, squats, too, but, I mean, yeah. upper back, I think deadlift. You know, for accessories, do some do some rowing. You're, you're, I love bent over rows. Yeah, bent over rows, like a pinlay-style row. Kind of uh, let it come to, do some where you come to a full stop at the floor. Do some where, uh, you know, you're touch and go, and do some that you keep supporting the weight the whole time. But I like wide grip, and you keep your back parallel. You sort of press your belly against your thighs with yeah. a narrow stance, and you just, you know, rather than that kind of really upright row, it's a good exercise. Yeah. And you dead stop the weight every rep as well. So every rep you put it down, and then lift it dead from the floor. You know, another good one, pull-ups. I mean, pull-ups are a great lift. You get good at pull-ups. That's what I would do to fix your posterior chain upper back. I still like good mornings. I think good mornings are... Yeah, a great lift if done properly. No, no, I've never done them. No. See, I, I love them, man. Explode the weight up. I don't ever really have to use more than about 135 pounds. It still will just destroy and wreck my hamstrings and glutes because I can do like 20 of them, right? And you low down to where you know, feel it really tighten up and then boom, come all the way up as fast as you can, squeeze, and, squeeze the ass and hamstrings. Mm -hmm. right, it's a good lift and weight's not heavy, so I'm not beating my body up like I would squatting yeah. or deadlifting, right? Um, defunk. 929. If you could only do two lifts to prepare for your respective sports, what would they be? Squats. And? I would say squats. And for me, squats and shoulder presses. So I had the same answer. Yeah. I, I would squat and push press. Yeah. No, I would I would have a pull. I would have a, a clean and a clean and some sort of clean with an overhead and a squat. Kind of um, clean into like a power jerk or clean into a well, that's push press. Nah, it's not really two lifts, is it? Well, it seems like it. Yeah, you can't just say, is it, at the end of the thing, I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I would say it's one lift. Or even, a, even like a, a muscle clean. You know, muscle, muscle snatch. snatch close, yeah. close group muscle snatch. A snatch would be really hard for me to give up. I, I'd need to pull something. Yeah, squat and, and a snatch would be really good. Pull yourself off. You pull yourself off. <laughs> just, just clean. Fucking just, you pull yourself You off. just stand over there in the corner. Fucking <laughs> wank. Uh, CrossFit Charlie. Uh, who wins in a chubby bunny competition in this group? Chubby bunny? I'm not 100% sure what that is. No, I don't know that. What's, I don't even know what that is. I'll take the victory. Done. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a Malutin, even though I don't know what it uh, is. Hasey. Hasey wins chubby bunny. Chubby bunny? I think you have to put marshmallows in your mouth. And say stuff, but I'm not 100 percent sure that's what it is. I think uh, we, uh, number to... number 47, num three or 47. Oh, you're a Hitman fan. Be nice. Favorite martial arts movie? Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one with Jean Claude Van Damme and uh, Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Double, team. Double, Double team. Double team is really really good. 
Great plot. Under Siege. Under Siege. You think that's a martial arts film? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a karate. Under Siege is really good. All right, let's say favorite martial arts film, not Bruce Lee. I've not really watched a lot of You don't like Bruce Lee, though. You said not Bruce Lee? Yeah. Because it's a clear winner. You, he would automatically win. That's why I went with my, my vote for double team. I he kind of stole under siege. What do you kind of forgot the, about the, it. The Mortal Kombat movie. I saw that recently, and it does not hold up. <laughs> no, I can imagine. It's not. But it's not great. What about? Uh, uh, I really like the old Jackie Chan movies, though. Oh, like, Jackie Chan really, films are really yeah. good. <clears throat> what about the Karate Kid? <laughs> Just Karate Kid. <laughs> yeah. It's very inspirational. Did it what speak to you as a boy? Growing up in London, you just thought, growing up in the valley in California, this is a fucking I was, brilliant. I was picked on in school. <laughs> <laughs> the Quest with Sean Claude Van Damme. Oh, I really like that one. Bloodsport. Bloodsport was good. Bloodsport's excellent. Yeah. It's too hard to decide. We would have to make about best of the a best? whole season. Best of the best, best is damn good. Best it's damn good, good right? Yeah. Are there any really American movies that just kind of piss you off? Mm. Well, all movies are basically really American, aren't they? American Ninja? You see that one? Like Beverly, Nin Beverly no, Hills? No, like movie? American Ninja. Though. I, I don't know what was going on, but like they were kind of walking on glass and... I don't know. I just <laughs> <laughs> American Ninja. I just remember it out. really bad. Check out American Ninja. It sounds <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> Kill Bill's Marsh Nuts. That's quite good. Yeah, uh, Kill Bill's great. Mm. Yeah, Kill Bill's both of them. The second one's more of a western. I quite like Crouch and Tiger for that. I like that. Did you? Mm. It's pretty oddsy. Kind of right up your valley, yeah, man. Well, I'm pretty high class. Yeah, that's true. Well, if it's martial arts, we go into like, superhero movies and stuff. And I, I really like superhero Yeah, movies. it just gets fucking weird. I just like movies in general. With oh God! Another, another, another one from old Kurt Schiller. You're getting greedy, kid. Started competing in kickboxing and martial art. Martial arts come from a strongman football background. Best way to remain strong while cutting weight. Cut weight slowly. You know, pound a week. Keep doing your strength lifts. Keep your protein intake up. That that's. It. It's my biggest thing, but I mean, if you're going to lose weight, you're going to lose strength. I mean, it all depends on how how fat you are, man. I mean, if you got a lot of fat to get rid of, you can probably do it for a bit. But if you're already pretty lean, you're not going to be able to lose weight and and keep your strength. And if you just really concentrate on not getting weak, that could help. Just focus on like meditate. Don't get weak. Don't get weak. That's how they do it in England. Real, real good. You eat anything. Back to cutting weight. Yeah. yeah. yeah why would anyone like, fucking do that? <laughs> I'm always heavy. I've just always been heavy. Uh -huh. And I let, never lose strength. No josk. Josk. You know what you could do for that previous question? Which one? Oh, like a colonic. You can lose a shitload of weight in a colonic. You can lose two. I don't think he's cutting weight for a competition. I mean, if you're cutting weight for a competition, there's plenty of ways Stop to, to, huh. to water cut. Yeah, the colonic's not going to make you lean. No. <laughs> just lose weight. I mean, he, I he just like says cutting weight. He says to remain strong while cutting weight. I assume you mean cutting weight, like body fat, and actually losing real weight, not just doing a water cut for competition. Um, so, I don't know, do that. Uh, no just What do they put in the water in Iceland? You know, a lot of big people, seriously, done. Uh, what aspects of their culture makes them jacked and untanned? <laughs> <laughs> I would say... Inbreeding. Yeah. Well, a form of it. No, I mean, that's just true. Yeah, that's basically what it is. Now, I think, I mean, back in the, the old times, you know, the weak died off and the strong lived, and so all my ancestors were... Strong, strong made with strong. other strong people? Yeah, and we're competitive people. Yeah. You know, on the verge of being arrogant. Like, if you take yeah. something up, you know, you want to be good at it. Well, then, I mean, living in Iceland, I mean, it's... It, it's a you know pretty unforgiving place. I mean, you got to deal with eight months of winter. It's fucking cold. I mean, the, the landscape's relatively unforgiving. Yeah. You know, most people live there, work for a living. You know, whether fishing or doing stuff like that. And so, I mean, yeah, and plus, it just produces hardy people. Yeah, and plus, when you like actually go into a sport, 
it's a whole group of the same guys that compete against each other. Yeah. We, we train together, we spend time together. You're always surrounded with strong people. I don't know, it's the prison mentality, I guess, you know? When everybody's strong, you know, you just kind of get strong. Right? I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Fucking look at me. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. What did she say? No, nah, she's just making the comment about not tan. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's the winter, eight months of year. Right, yeah, yeah. You're not hanging out outside. Especially not trying to get a tan. <laughs> In fact, you look really odd tan in Iceland. You kind of look like an asshole. Yeah, but surely during the summer there's more sunlight. Yeah, there is, but it, it mean, but it can go from like being really comfortable in seventy to forty because clouds came over and it got windy. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why we're all tattooed, make up for the uh, not being tan part. That's good. Yeah. Is there any kind of strongman specific training that could benefit powerlifters if they wanted to add to their training? Yeah, of course. Every type of training adds you in another sport, I think. Right. Yeah. I think farmer's walk. Farmer's walk to make you really strong. It's upper back, it's everything. Yeah. I mean, yoke, yoke makes you... I mean, those two would be really big benefits. Atlas stones. Atlas stones would, you know, they yeah. would make you big. And just yeah. natural stone lifting. Yeah. Testing yourself in different ways makes you strong. That's you know, the main reason, right? Yeah, I'd say probably one of the biggest, you know, for... Um, you know, simple thing powerlifter could add to their training, heavy tire flips. Yeah. Fucking tire flips are one of the easier ones to do. Most places have a tire now, and they're underrated. They're fucking brutal. Yeah. Fucking really hard. And, and exhausting. Stand against the training partner and lift back and forth yeah. until somebody gives up. Yeah, that will, that will tear the shit out of you. Is that the way you train, Scott? Um, no. <laughs> uh, heavy kick gear. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Check that guy's stuff out. He's got uh, cool equipment. Favorite places to visit and or eat in Inverness uh, and Edinburgh. Uh, it looks like there will be spending. He'll be spending some time there in vacation, March and April. I've actually never been to either. No. No. Never took you to Edinburgh. No. Edinburgh's a nice place too. Like, if you want to see stuff, oh. walk around. I've not really been to anywhere. I've no? been to Inverness lots of times. Yeah, I've never been to Inverness. There's a, there's a, there's a, I've been to a few curry houses in Inverness. There's some pleasing curry houses there. There's a few restaurants on the river. It's quite nice, on the, next to the river. But I, I can't off the top of my head think of anywhere. Hang out by the river, hang out downtown. There's a KFC in the, uh, in the shopping <laughs> centre. <laughs> no, in like, Edinburgh, you, you like just... KFC. No, it's brilliant. Yeah, you can double down. Did they, did they get that over here? Double down. No. It's fried chicken, uh, bacon in the middle, and, and fried chicken on the outside. Really? Yeah, no bread. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, right? Yeah. No, but in Edinburgh, you just, you know, in the middle of the town, you can just start walking one way, and you'll see a bunch of stuff. I spent a lot of time there, you know, waiting for stuff to come pick me up or waiting for a plane and uh, I spend a lot of time there. You can just, no matter which way you walk, you'll see something nice. Underground uh, tours are pretty good. All right. I would recommend the underground ghost tour, but you know, you learn a lot of things about history and stuff when you go to Edinburgh. So if you're a history buff, Edinburgh's the place to be. What about Inverness? Um, You've been there loads of times. There's um. There's a nightclub called the Miami's. <laughs> but I know some people have been in. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, that's not. That's funny, yeah. That was the word of it. Cut it off. Used to be a tour guide. Yeah. Make loads of money. All right. Sorry, we don't have more, <laughs> more help for you. Um, Mwood0915. Are there any plyos you guys would recommend for a shot butter to do better explosion than a technique? Yeah, sure, man. Um, I like seated box jumps. I like hurdle jumps. I like, sta I like standing broad jumps. 
basically any any type of jumping is going to be beneficial. There's no way for you to jump slow. I wouldn't do really high box jumps because I think they're stupid. I think it's a really good way to get hurt. Fall off a box from four feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just land on something that you can get off of comfortably without getting hurt. That's a goal. You get hurt in training, you're a fucking idiot. Well, like, I mean, if you get hurt, you know, like, a, nah, like catastrophic nah. failure is fine, yeah. but if it's because you're trying to jump on a max box, yeah, fucking, why? I think you've got to be careful, especially if you're not used to jumping. You've got to be careful of the reps. And if you're jumping over things, so you're landing, obviously the impact's big, so you need to count your contacts, and you need to, you need to start low. I've, I've seen loads of coaches will say, right, plyometrics. Like, you've never done plyometrics before. Right, here's 10 hurdles. Do 10 sets of 10. You know? Cool. That's a hundred hard contacts for, yeah. a, for a potentially heavy person who's not used to it. So you, you need to be careful because you can easily really... What would you recommend like sets and reps? reps? Say, I mean, he's looking, he's clearly looking to add it to his stuff. So it's easy I would to... say start off really slowly. If, if you're going to jump up onto things, that's fine. So box jumps are easy because you're jumping onto something, but then it's not as plyometric as rebounding off something. So if you're jumping over hurdles, I'll just do three hurdles. Yeah, jump over that. I, I, I won't do box, I won't do any or type of jumping times. over like uh three or five yeah i like them i like doing them weighted i like a weighted box jump i think some one-legged things as well so hops uh, and also jumping along is good so uh you can do sort of elongated strides kind of like a triple jumper yeah so you're doing strides and you're doing a double arm one on each rep mm. on each contact and then you can do things like standing triple jump starting on each leg three bunnies five bunnies that kind of thing's really good um, Would you say that you're really good at double arm pump? Pretty good. Pretty, <laughs> just pretty good. A good one as well, like a standing backflip over a bar. So, oh. so not a backflip, but a back jump where you stand with your back. Like a high jump bar. Yeah. Like a high jump with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. No with one that has one. that available. <laughs> if you're at an athletics track, you can do it. Most people, when they do shot put, uh, sometimes at an athletics track, they sometimes high well, jump. From what I understand, they're just in a parking lot by themselves. <laughs> Never been any proof of the other. Uh, what is the Highland Games in Scotland to compete in? Uh, as many as possible. Yeah. What was that question? Uh, it's from a girl. Like, she's Way asking face. about a specific yeah. game? Yeah, yeah, what is the Highland Games in Scotland to compete in? Say, for a girl, where do they have female classes over here? Inverness, I think. Uh -huh. I think there's one every year in Inverness. Yeah. I don't know of any others. Well, Start there. Dougie has games that... Yeah, but they're kind of invite only. Yeah, but... Make make, make, make a name for yourself and get invited. Yeah, but then you gotta find a place to make a name for yourself. Yeah, yeah the only one I know of that happens every year is Inverness. The others are just, just sometime. Hmm? The others are just sometime. I just don't know of any others. Um, you can actually go on SHGA and go through every single one, and sometimes they reference to actually a females competition. All right. But Inverness there was one is, last um, weekend, I think. It was there really? Yeah. Uh, um, find a group on Facebook that goes. Inverness is like second Saturday in July. Yeah. Uh, one C all day. One C a day. Once a day. There you go. I'm still fairly new to strongman Highland Games. Five total competitions in the last year. How how often should I be competing, or or should I try to give myself a certain amount of time between comps? Um, for Highland Games, I'd say compete as often as you can. I think there's just something more you learn from competing. Yeah. Uh, strongman, I think it's a little different. Um, but if, if you're new, compete a lot. Yeah, if you're new and young, compete a lot. Don't pass up the opportunity to compete. No. Yeah, ever. Because there's not that many competitions. Where does he live? Oh, I don't know. I don't know this guy. If he lives in Scotland, there's a lot of games. Yeah. I mean, a big mistake I hear people say is they want to know, like, what, what's the strength level they should be at before they compete? Mm -hmm. You know, how strong, compete. how strong should I be before I go do a Highland Games? Or how strong should I be before I do a Strongman? You know, like, minimum strength. I, I don't think there is. I think, honestly, what you should do is go to a competition, be a novice, maybe get your ass kicked. And, I mean, see if it's a sport you like before you start investing a bunch of time and energy to training for it. Yeah, I mean, when I went over to... Highland Games, I was extremely strong, but I still got my ass kicked. Yeah. So, no matter how high you get your strength up, you know. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with getting your ass kicked. No, it, you know, shows you what you can do against everybody else, and 
you get to work on stuff. Yeah, and as long as you're working on something and making progress, yeah, that's fine. I mean, don't lose sight of what it is, you know. Yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> Rob Banda, biggest gym failure. Biggest gym failure. Uh, in college, warming up for track practice, playing basketball, I tore my ACL. Mm. That did it. Cost me an indoor season. Yeah? Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, you should always stick to your own sport while you're warming up. I've had all kinds of injuries doing stupid stuff in between. But, I don't know. Big, the biggest fail I've seen wasn't by me. It was somebody actually... A friend. <laughs> yeah. No, I would, I would, I would say if it happened to me. But I've seen somebody shit himself in the squats. That was quite embarrassing. I also got a bit pinned with a squat. He, he went down, and he just he was perfectly balanced. He couldn't fall forward or backward. <laughs> he was just, he was just there. And he couldn't move. Yeah, but that was quite funny. Yeah, in the end. Was this it, Robin? Robin Hogs. <laughs> this was at George. Uh, Smith. <laughs> All right. um, I once knew a guy who, who came over from America to train and <laughs> left his stuff all over the country. He went to about three different gyms and left left bits of his personal effects at every gym. Is that the guy that lost the water bottle pretty yeah, early on yeah, his trip? Yeah. 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 He left his shoes and some. Look car. here, fucking Liz. <laughs> get your shit together. You're going to get hoofed right in the FUD. Send my bottle back to my house. I'm watching you. I have people watching you. 